Sol. Okay. It's a question about the PL. Okay. So, some people say the PL is intensive as opposed to the heat field who's causative. Or, and some people say that the PL stands as an action, whereas the cal, for example, there are cal statives. But the PL really is very confusing what it really is. Okay, so let's try to talk a little bit about the PL. First of all, everything you said is, is not, you, you presented two things, but they are not contradictory, okay? Just uh, let me put it on screen. This is taken from the course about the Book of Ruth, which has um, a grammatical, the course, each of those courses, Ruth and Jonah, has a section of, of grammar discussion. And in the third part of the book of, of the grammatical discussion concerning the book of Ruth, we discuss the various binyanim and the uses of the binyanim. I'll just, when we'll talk a little bit about the PL. Okay, so uh, here is like the, here are the binyanim, okay, the structures and the frequency of uh, the structures. And we want to focus today, uh, we want to focus with this question concerning the PL, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the morphology of the PL and the uses of the PL. Here is the morphology of the PL. Uh, I know that for some of you, we haven't, you haven't maybe even heard the term binyanim so far. It's all right, you'll hear it now, you'll hear it in the future in a more systematic way, and you'll understand these. These are the patterns of the verbal system. You might not have heard the, the term patterns as well. You'll get to everything in good time, I promise you. So that's the PL, okay? And it is characterized by mainly two characteristics. At the gesh in the second root letter, you can see that the root letters of this root are the kav, the ta, the kaf, the tav, and the bet, right? And you can see how the tav has a strong dagesh in all of these examples. How do I know it's strong, guys? Because it's preceded by a vowel. Preceded by a vowel, right? We've talked. To, we have that distinguishing the weak dagesh from the strong dagesh. Right, you can see that indeed in all of these cases it is, it, it is following a vowel, it is preceded by a vowel. And that these are the two characteristics of the doubled stem in general, and it applies generally to the PL. Now let's talk a little bit about the uses of the PL. Okay, so you said, Two things. You've mentioned that some say the PL is intensive and others say that PL is um, relaxation uh, when cal is not really, a, not always a relaxation. And you can see that we have both. Actually, we have more. We have uh, all, we have three uses of the PL and these are not all of the uses of the PL as well. So the PL is used for various purposes. Okay, this pattern. Think of, uh, okay. Think of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I want to explain the concept of patterns for those of you who are not yet there. It, uh, I'll do it very basically. It's, it's much more elaborate in Hebrew. But think of an English word when you see an L-Y at the end of the word. So you know, oh, that word is an adverb. It modifies the way an action is done. So he walks slowly. Okay, by the form of the word slowly, even if I don't know what it means, I know it describes the action. So I can tell something about the grammar of that word just based on the form of the word without understanding its meaning. 
okay? That's kind of the same concept. Like you see an ER at the end of a wood. Dancer, baker, okay, treasurer, okay? You can tell that it's a profession even if you don't know what dance is or what bake is. You can say, oh, that word, the, the pattern of the wood, in both cases, the suffixes, er and ly, tell me something about the nature of the wood, even if I don't know what it means. Okay? So, in a similar way, certain patterns of woods, and the piel is this pattern where, where we have the dagesh in the second root letter, right? And the vowel under the first root letter, okay? Where we see this pattern, we can assume some things about the nature of the action, about the word, even if it is, even if we don't know what it means, okay? Now, the cases where we use the PL are, as you've seen, we have a lot of different PL verbs in the Bible. We've talked, we've seen the frequency here. You can see that we have almost 7,000 occurrences for the PL, okay, which gives us the, the PL, the bronze medal of biblical Hebrew verb frequency, following the gold for the kal and the silver for the hefil, mm -hmm. the PL gets the bronze. So we have a lot of PL verbs, and there are different motivations to be using the PL. One of them is the intensive. Now, what is an intensive question? What is an intensive um, action? How do you define intensivity? Okay, one could say, "Listen, um, I had to, I had to walk all the way to the grocery store. Uh, that was intensive for me." <laughs> Another person runs an ultra marathon. You know. So how do you define intensivity in a way that is more tangible? Okay. Any ideas? Could it be like, rather than saying I broke the glass, I might say I obliterated the glass? Right. I shattered the glass yeah, or, shattered the glass. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, certainly. But how, how would you distinguish? What's the difference between breaking and shattering or, or, uh, Right? O obliterating has a very uh, specific sense of, of like making into non-existent. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but breaking and shattering, let's say, what's the difference between these two? Uh, shatter or well, breaking seems to imply you're just taking from a state from where it was to something that's no longer whole. Shattering implies that they have taken it to pieces. Right. More, very good. You know. Very good. So in the same way, the intensity of the PL indicates multiplicity. In the same way, shattering is different than breaking. Uh, he broke in Hebrew would be shavar. He shattered would be shiber. Because of the multiplicity uh, of the, in this case, uh, objects or or becoming few objects, okay? So he broke into more than one piece, okay? He broke into pieces. So there is an element of multiplicity, either in the doing of the action or in the recipients or in the, uh, the objects, okay? Something is more than one, okay? Uh, concerning that action. So that's usually how the intensive is uh, defined. And here we have a good example from the Book of Ruth, to, a, uh, to an action that might not be considered to be intensive in other languages, but is used by the PL. It's intensive according to the intensivity of the PL here. So, Saul, can you read aloud Ruth 2 3? Vatelech vatavo vatlaket basade achare hakotzerim. Right, so vatelaket, we have a dagesh in the tab, so this should be a moving shiva, but except for that, I think 
you did very good, הקוצרים, right? ותלך ותבוא ותלקט בשדה אחרי הקוצרים. <coughs> and you can see that ותלקט is in the PL, we can see the דגש and the vowel that we've talked about. Uh, what is the multiplicity of the verb למד קט? How is gleaning multiple? <coughs> By the nature of the action, you go, you pick like this, that, 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 right? That's the difference between hunters and gatherers, right? So gleaning is done multiple times. It's, a, it's an action that really entails multiple gleanings. You, you, don't, you cannot say uh, glean when you, when you actually mean she took one. Right? This is why the action of gleaning in Hebrew is represented by the pattern that we call PL. Guys, don't worry. If, you, if some of the terms I've used are new, it's all right. You know, you'll come across them, I promise. Okay. So Ruth gleaned several times? No, 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 no. The action of gleaning in and of itself is involves multiple part multiple you, you don't glean just one stalk right one grain you know the think about it it's an action that involves a lot of small takings do you see what i'm saying Saul? yes yes i do okay so that's one of the uses an intensive intensive that has Uh, multiplicity, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about other uses. So you've mentioned two, and, and you kind of uh, contrasted between them, but they're not necessarily contrasting. They're just other different uses of the PL. The PL is used for more than one thing. So I'm moving, I'm jumping here to the bottom. Uh, let's have someone else read it. Uh, Mani, uh, would you like to read? the uh, verse here at the bottom. Okay. Um, translative voice. Art in uh, Kilu uh, H um, Ko Hakizir Hakazir Hakazir uh, Arshir Lee. Right. until they will have finished the, all of the harvest that I have, or all my harvest. Right. Ad im kilu et kol hakatsir asher li. And we can see it's a PL verb. Again, we have that dagesh, strong dagesh in the second root letter and the vowel under the first root letter. Kilu, okay. And here, we don't have something that, is done many times, okay? You finish at a certain point, okay? You don't have many finishes. So why do we have the PL used here? Okay? The reason we have the PL used here, because the KAL verb, which is the basic form of the verb, okay? It's the unmarked active action is intransitive. Here we have to explain another term in regards to grammar. In regards to verbs, uh, there are certain categories when we, when we come to uh, the meaning of verbs. We have transitive, we have Uh, in, let's start with intransitive, just a second, I'll put it on screen because we cover that as well, here, okay, that's in unit 21, we talk about this subject of, of a little bit about the way, 21, no, 11, 11, oh, yeah, 
11. The, the way verbs are formulated in Hebrew, it really starts with a picture of my car, which, uh, you know, you would ask why, but that's uh, when, when we take that course, you'll understand why I put a picture of my car in, in the discussion concerning Hebrew verbs and how they relate to one another. Japanese car, not Hebrew. Okay. Uh, they don't they don't make really cars here. They used to in the 60s, 70s or whatever. Um, okay, they assemble cars a little bit here, but again, really not. We don't have an automotive industry here. Anyway, so intransitive, transitive, and detransitive. Intransitive are actions that do not take a direct object, okay? Uh, the, the common English example is Jesus wept, okay? It, the, the verb wept does not take a, a direct object, okay? There, there are many examples. He kara, he kneeled. Yatsa, he went out. Usually doesn't take. Nafal, he fell. Okay, Yashar, he, he kept on straight. Barach, he fled. These so are in... Come again, Ron? It, it's acting like a... In the Greek, it's acting like a middle, like a middle voice. Not uh, active, not passive, but... Voices, different story, okay? okay. Uh, but not unrelated. We have voices also... Okay, in nice. Hebrew, and we discuss them in unit 21 or something of, of this, okay? Alongside the, the basic discussion concerning the binyanim, but that's intransitive. Okay. There are verbs that take a direct object. We, we call them transitive. Uh, so, achal, he ate. Okay, so he ate something. Achal Adam, he ate a man. Yeah, I know it's a little bit of an awkward choice, but I was just quoting a verse. Okay, uh, yeah, we we do have that. Do you, do you know where Achal Adam is mentioned? No. Anyone? Ate a man. Ate a man, yeah. Achal Adam, these very words. I don't think people are kosher. I know that. People are not <laughs> kosher. You're right. So it might not talk about people uh, eating people. I was just creating this, you know, mentioning. A bear? It. Would it be a bear? Uh, Elijah story? No, Elijah? It, no, no. There she's eating the ne'arim, the, the uh, boys. Achal, okay. Adam Achal uh, is from Ezekiel, right? Uh. Ezekiel talking about, you know, a parable about this uh, lioness who is raised, raising its uh, her cub. Anyway, um, so, achal tapuach, we can make it easier, right? An apple. Okay, shamar et ha'ir, he guarded the city. Ra'a et beito, he saw his house. Yada Et chava ishto, right? And Adam knew Eve his wife. Yada et chava ishto. Radaf et bene Amon. He chased the children of Amon, the sons of Amon, the Ammonites. Okay, these are all transitive verbs. They take a direct object. So far, are you with me? Moving on to the next category, detransitive, okay? They take two objects, okay? Oh. Two objects. Natan. When talking about Natan, Natan is a very important Hebrew verb, okay? Do you know why? Some of you already know why. Why is it important? A give. He gave that's, a, that's also one reason. Yeah, no, I, I, my my joke that I 
use oh, no, no, no. because it's part of my own name. Your own name, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Do, do, do you know what the Ron means in Hebrew? What is Ron? Ron means in Hebrew joy. Joy. Joy, yeah. Yeah. There is a famous song uh, about, you know, Arbor Day, Jewish Arbor Day. Right. They they have joy in their heart and spade in their hand. They go they go to plant trees. So yeah, they go to plant trees. So Ron is uh, and Shaul, you know what it means, right? It, right. Yes. So Natan has to do with giving, and it takes two objects. Because you give something to someone. Okay, titinos, for those of you who have Greek background. Okay. Shalach, he sent something to someone. He said something to someone. Okay, these verbs are detransitive. Going back to Saul's questions, question about the PL, we have the use of the PL as a transitive voice for intransitive call verbs. Whenever the call verb is intransitive, and we want to make that action transitive, we want to make it take an object, we use the PL. So the verb kala in the kal, in the basic form, kala, that would be it finished without taking the object. Okay? The cereal was finished. Okay? The, okay? Something finished but we want to use the word finished for other purposes the student finished her homework so how do we do that in hebrew in hebrew we do it by choosing a different pattern okay we choose the pl pattern now we get the same action but not just for itself in in an intransitive way but we get it in a transitive way. Finished something. Okay, and you can see that in the verb. Ad im kilu, until they finish. Et. Et is a very common word, like almost 12,000 times in the Bible. And usually it indicates that the following element is the direct object of the verb. So we have it twice in the first verse of the Bible, right? Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. Right. So we've got et kol hakatsir asher li. So the verb kilu here is transitive, whereas the kal would be intransitive. Kala, it finished. Kila, he finished something. Kila ledaber finished talking. Kilu et hakatsir they finished the harvest. Kalu they were finished. Kilu kalu they finished. They were finished in a sense. Okay. Kilu they finished something. Okay. So that's both of the options that you've mentioned, Sol. And both of them are used by the, we use the PL to mark them. Now the PL is used for other things as well. Okay? The PL is used sometimes as a causative voice. Here, lekayim, the root kuf, vav, and mem has to do with standing. Lekayem to make to stand, to cause to stand, to confirm. Okay. Okay, causative. We do have further uses. Okay, but they're not as common. I'll just mention. Uh, I'll just mention. Sometimes the 
denominative verbs are used with a PL, verbs that are based on nouns. I'll give you an example of, okay, you know the, the maybe to Google something, right? We use the verb, the word Google as a verb, right? Or gaslighting, okay? Or other, other terms, okay? Or, okay, which are based on nouns. Okay, so sometimes the verbs are based on nouns, sometimes nouns are based on verbs, okay? Verbs in Hebrew, in Biblical Hebrew, that are based on nouns, oftentimes are using the PL pattern. Okay, so to throw dust at, me, some, at someone, okay, is expressed by the PL and not by uh, the Kal, okay, as a denominative verb, okay, when David is running away from Avshalom, there is this Benjaminite guy called Shimei, son of Gera, if you remember, good, if not, I recommend reading 2 Samuel chapter 16, and this Shimei, son of Gera, is seeing David running away, and he is cursing him, and he is throwing stones at him, and he is throwing dirt at him, dust, dirt, okay? The verb for throwing dirt is based on the word dirt in Hebrew, afar, but in the PL, ripar, he threw this dark dirt. He threw dirt. Okay. Second Samuel sixteen thirteen. Yes, Ron. I, I, this is beside. I'm just as you were talking. I just realized there's a little bit of sarcasm there with Absalom's name and the fact sure. that he didn't have a sure. peaceful relationship with his father at all. Sure, not just yeah. that. You can see uh, yeah. when David is mourning, uh, you know, and when David is asking. His general, Hashalom la Naar of Shalom, mm -hmm. is there peace to Absalom? Obviously, you cannot translate it because, because you know, of Shalom, has, but you can hear that Hashalom la Naar of Shalom. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, this is well, well incorporated into the story. There is almost, uh, I don't want to get, I don't want to say almost no, but there, there are. You know, the importance of names in the Bible is something that you see almost in every lesson, in every, like, book, every name. So, uh, for instance, in the said course about the Book of Ruth, we have a unit that deals with the names of the figures in the Book of Ruth. The same goes for Jonah. We're going to talk about the name of Jonah. So, so definitely something to pay attention to. Um now we have uh, other interesting use of the PL, which you did not ask about, but it's interesting nonetheless. The PL is used sometimes for the opposite meaning of, <clears throat> of the uh, verb, okay? I'll give you an example, fascinating one. How, what's the word for sin in Hebrew? Chata. Chata would be the verb, right? Let's put it on screen. Chata, chet, tet, aleph, right? That's the uh, verb for committing a sin. Sinning, if you will, okay? And now in the... How would be the PL, by the way, of of this? How would be the PL? Chite. Right, very good. PL, chite. Okay. Chite, uh, yeah, right. Uh, basically, chite. 
אוקיי. חיטא. Now, would you care to guess what's the meaning of the verb חיטא? be made to sin no as oh. i said I'm, I'm going to demonstrate a different oh, oh, kind of... oh. prevent it from sinning so oh, no. so not prevented exactly from sinning but really it means to uh purify mm. so so chata would be to sin or sin okay chata here he sinned okay but the the meaning of the verb in the kal has to do with sin. And the meaning of the verb in the PL has to do with purify. That's crazy. Right. I should say that this is not as common, uh, as commonly demonstrated as with other ver as other uses of the PL, but it is like, you know, it's it's not something that is very extremely rare that I'm, you know, just basing this on one or two examples. No, that's the regular verb for uh, purifying in Biblical Hebrew. You can see that in Leviticus, like in the process of of purifying the 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 altar, you know, the the tabernacle. Yeah, that's the the verb. So we've talked about the PL, we've talked about various uses of the PL. Um, and thank you for your question, uh, Sol. Thank you for taking the time. Sure. That's, listen, my, the concept I'm going with now, you know, I'm, I'm in a sense, I'm, I'm sharing here, guys. I feel, I feel in a, like... In a safe space, so to speak. <laughs> um, I'm, while I've been doing it for 15 years, uh, teaching Hebrew, as a business, I'm fairly like I've been do I've been teaching not through the institution for some time, but as a business, I'm a, quite a young business, and I'm looking for the best model for 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 the for me and for my teachings. So I thought that what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer these courses again, basic or more advanced and have these Q and A hours. So people could come. And even though you had a more advanced question, I was trying to make it accessible in some ways to, to also people who have less backgrounds. And if they ask a question, I would try to answer it in a way that would benefit others as well. So um, that's that's um, a little bit of, of what I'm trying to achieve here. So guys, any more questions? If not, I would love for, for, for uh, some of you to read a little bit if you want. These are all from the Book of Ruth. These all demonstrate the PL. And I chose these because these are all very common PL verbs. Okay? There are uh, many different verbs in the PL. These ones are quite common. So the most common verb, root, that has the PL is the verb for speaking. Okay, uh, you have that vaidaber in in uh, in the Ten Commandments, right? So vaidaber is also a pl. Uh, here we have this verse. Uh, the the that's the most common verb with a pl has to do with saying, speaking. Okay, uh, don't be shy. Let's have someone. James, would you like to read something? No. Emmanuel? Yes, I'll try. Go ahead. Whichever but, one you want to take. If, if you want to start with this, we'll read this one. Go ahead. 
Okay. Uh, ki nitam me tani vaki di bar ta um, al lev um, she Feta, no, she fe hot tach. She fratecha. She she katecha. Right, we have one, two, three, four vowels, which means that how many syllables do we have? Uh, four. Exactly. Very good. Shif ha te ha. Right. We can see the accent under the second to last syllable. So shif ha te ha. Shif ha te ha. Right. Ki ni hamtani vechidi balta alev shif ha te ha. Right. Um. So as I said, dalit bet and reish is the most common root with a PL, that's the most frequent, uh, the frequent, the most frequent verb that takes the PL, dibarta, diber, usually in the form of vaidaber, vaidaber Moshe, vaidaber Adonai el Moshe, vaidaber Adonai el Moshe ve'el Aaron be'eretz Mitzrayim lemor. Okay. Uh, you're losing me here. Can you repeat that? I said that the root dalet bet and reish, which is the root of the verb dibarta, is the most frequently uh, used root for, with a PL. So when we yeah, look yeah. at all of the PL verbs in the Bible, right? Remember, we've talked about the pattern of the PL again. Um, we have not covered it. It's not covered in the BHR, right? It's um, that's the PL is one of the patterns of the Binyanim. We've said that we have about 7,000 PL verbs, okay? Those PL verbs, the most common, the most frequent among these 7,000 PL verbs is the verb dibarta, is the root dalet betresh, okay? Can so you that's... refresh my memory? What does the G-N-D-H stand for? The H is hifo, I think. The, okay. Uh, the H stands for the hey, which in this case the active would be the hifil, and the passive would be the hofal. The D stands for doubling or dubbelstem. It comes from German, but it's the same in English. Doubling. That's the dagesh in the second root letter that we that characterized the doubled binyanim. And the N stands for the noon of the nifal, and the G stands for the German Grundstem, which is the English ground stem, basically the unmarked, okay, the basic, what we call Kal. That's G, N, D, and H. Uh, that's, that's not just limited to the Hebrew. That's definition that, something that could help you with other Semitic languages as well. So going back to the PL, that's the, Itbael here, oh, we've we've seen Ruth 2.13. Dibarta. We also have Nihamtani. Nihamtani. This is interesting. Um, mm, okay. Okay. Let's in Nihamtani it has a, a, a transitive sense. Okay, because otherwise it would be in the Nifal, and that would be he regretted, okay? And then here it is in the PL and that's he comforted, okay? You comforted me, literally, here. But the it has a, it's outgoing, it's transitive, okay? It takes an object, you comforted someone, okay? In this case, you comforted me. Okay, that's the transitive voice that we've talked about, dibarta, Okay, and possibly because you say more than one word, okay, so so this takes 
possibly that's a reason for the PL. Uh, but I'm not sure that we must find like an explanation for each and every one of the PL verbs, why it is used this way. Sometimes it is obvious. Okay.